Good evening and welcome to my home. I have just a short word that I'd like to share with you, something that the Lord has been speaking to me about. So let's start out with a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you for your presence with each one of us as we are listening to your word and meditating on it. I'm thankful, Father, that as your word goes forth, it goes forth in power and strength, and it gives us what we need to walk a, a wonderful life and, and to be healthy and whole. I just thank you for this time together and bless each one watching. In Jesus' name, amen. As um, I have been doing some studying, I have um, a title for this message, and it's a little different, but I, you'll find out what I am talking about when uh, I get into it. The name of it is, You Want Me to Do What? When we hear those words, it's always something that we feel incapable of doing, that we don't have the knowledge or the strength or the talent or the gifts, or it's just something so far beyond what we believe um, we could do that, you know, we're in, we're in unbelief and we think maybe we might have heard wrong. Well, the Lord has been speaking to me about a story in the Bible for us to learn from, and it is a pattern with him. The word says he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And sometimes what we believe he should use or would use is not what he uses. So let me just set up the scene um, for this story I'm sharing with you today. It comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, and the verses is, is 11 through 22. And you can, I ask you to read this yourself and, and to just um, meditate on there and ask the Lord um, what he's called you to do. Amen. Uh, this is a story of Ananias and the Apostle Paul. It is at the beginning of um, Paul's conversion experience, and um, things were a little different. Now, as we look at Paul throughout the Bible, he wrote so much of the New Testament, and even though he never walked with Jesus, he received instruction, and he received wisdom and understanding through the Holy Spirit. So in ways, he really knew Jesus better and, and the plans and the provision of Jesus better than the disciples who walked with him. Because in their mind, they still considered him to be, even though he was the Messiah, he was going to be the warrior who freed them from the bondage of um of Rome. So um, I want to read a few verses to you. I want to read verse 13 and 14. And this is from the Passion Translation. But Lord, Ananias replied, many have told me about his terrible persecution of those in Jerusalem who are devoted to you. In fact, the high priest has authorized him to seize and imprison all those in Damascus who call on your name. Who is he talking about? Who is Ananias talking about? He is talking about Saul. Saul was the man who persecuted Christians. He was a legalistic Jew who was very um, well-trained intellectually. He knew what the word said. He knew what the law said but he had no understanding about Jesus. And because of it, Jesus was a threat to him and to the other leaders in the Jewish tradition. In the Jewish tradition. And so he asked for special assignment to go and to gather up all these Jews that he found in these areas who considered themselves Christians and to put them to death because they were spreading evil, which was the stories of Jesus, they were spreading evil and they were um, were affecting the Jewish uh, religion and the Jewish people, causing them to question what they had been told and, and had been taught their whole lives. And so we know right before this, Saul had a 
Damascus Road experience. God had plans for Saul. And he struck him down as he was on the road to Damascus. And in, in that, he fell off of his horse and he became blind. He had these scales that came upon his eyes. And, and Saul cried out, Lord, Lord, why are you, why are you prosecuting, persecuting me? And, um, God talked to him and told him, um, where to go, that he was going to go to a place and he was going to send someone to him and he was going to, um, prove the power of Jesus, the power of God, the power that was available. And he had plans for Paul's life. You know, Paul became, Saul became Paul. He became a new different per person when the DNA of God entered into Saul, when he was saved and he received Jesus and he was baptized. There was a new DNA. There was an exchange that happened in him. And the old Saul became the new Paul, the defender of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The next verse I want to read to you is verse 15. You know, we ask God to use us. We ask God to do things for us. But when he tells us something, we have the same kind of answer that Ananias said. Well, you know, God, okay, but you know that, that this person did this, this, and this, and, and what kind of family they've come from and all this other stuff. But listen to God's answer to um, Ananias. And it was just, it's a wonderful thing for us to reread. In fact, I underlined it in my Bible because this is God's plan. It may not always be our plan, but God's plan is the one that will come to pass. Amen. The Lord Yahweh answered him, arise and go. I have chosen this man to be my special messenger. He will be brought before kings, before many nations, and before the Jewish people to give them the revelation of who I am. That was God's plan for, you know, God, God planned the beginning for, to the end. He knows everything that's going to happen. And his plan was going to use Paul, who had been a persecutor, as a redeemer, as one who reached out in the body and gathered people together for Jesus. God's plan says, I chose him. We know he chose each one of us. And he's given each one of us a destiny. There in his plans, there are things that he has for us to do. People that he has for us to reach that maybe we're asking like Ananias, but God, don't you know what they're into? Don't you know where they were at this weekend? Um, you know, you know that they've had uh, their children removed from their homes and, you know, they don't care about anything and they won't keep a job. And, you know, they were going with so-and-so when they were still married. We disqualify people. God is the one who qualifies he says, I am going to use that person. When we think about when God moves on our heart to talk to someone or to minister to someone, we have to remind ourselves of this verse 15. God's plans are not our plans. The last scripture I want to share with you is verse 17. Ananias left. Now, it does not say that Ananias questioned God any further. It doesn't say that he in his self was trying to figure it all out. When God told him that he had chosen Paul to be a special messenger, a special assignment for him, Ananias questioned it no further. Ananias left and found the house where Saul was staying. He went inside and laid hands on him, saying, Saul, my brother, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road 
has sent me to pray for you so that you might see again and be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. The thing that Saul needed the most to change him into Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, the thing that he needed was what God needed Ananias for. He needed Ananias to come to Paul. And he needed Ananias to, to talk to him, to minister to him about salvation and to bring the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was not up to Ananias to qualify him. It was up to God. Father God, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for your presence that surrounds and envelops each one of us. I'm so thankful that even when we don't step up or when we question your motives or your directives, you love us enough to just explain or give us peace in our heart. And then you lead us, you walk through life with us. Father, I repent for the times that I have not been obedient to what you have led me to do. And I thank you that you still give me an opportunity, regardless of what, I, what I've done in the past. Father, I thank you for each one of my brothers and sisters watching. I thank you, Father, that you will just give strength to their heart to know that when you call them to step out, that you are there with them and you're going to lead and direct them. And they'll be able to follow the path that you have. That, Father, you're going to use each one of us to reach out to those Saul in our Saul's in our life that you have designed to use for the kingdom of God and that we're going to be bold in that witness and in that testimony of what you have done for us. And we're going to just bless them and embrace them as Ananias did with Saul. Saul became Paul and Ananias was willing to go even though the threat of what Paul had done to so many Christians was before his mind. When God told him, I chose him, Ananias reached out in faith and was obedient to the calling of God. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching tonight. I know this is a little bit different word, but I just felt like there's so many of us who have walked lives that that we have people around us that have been Saul's. Um, it may be because of religion. It may be because of race. It doesn't matter. God created us male and female, and he created all of us together, all of us. None of us are any better than another. We have all sinned and come short of deserving a loving God. But because he loves us, he reaches out to each one of us. And we are to reach out and to love each other with that love that he has given us. So today, I just want to encourage you. God moves on your heart and speaks to you or shows you someone that he wants to reach, he wants you to contact for his kingdom, do it. Do it. Be obedient to his leading. And it's going to fulfill so much in your life. He loves you so much. God bless you. Have a great week. I look forward to being with you next week. God bless and good night.